Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about lying and software developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do you think are the most common lies told by software developers? And the short answer is, it's just going to make things better. That's the most common lie. Let me explain. So from my perspective, the most common lie that a software developer tells anybody, and this is the reason why I think that there is a lack of trust between business people and software engineers in many cases. You see, the reason why you don't get that time to refactor that thing that is causing you a lot of problems and delays and so forth is because your business person who is in charge of your work hours or your schedule doesn't understand the problem but it also comes from the idea that they can't trust that the thing that you want to do is actually going to make a difference because they don't feel that this is a problem and they don't know if you're actually honest about the fact that this is going to make a difference or if it's just something you want to do. That I think is extremely interesting because it happens all the time and I can understand if I became a business person today I, and I decided to become a product owner or a manager or something like that, this would be something that I would be relentlessly on pretty much all the time because I see it all the time. I see seasoned veteran programmers who read a news article or a blog article about something that makes them excited and all of a sudden it is as if the only way for us to save the project is by doing this thing. And I think that's hilarious because by just reading a blog article about how the success cases for Golang as an example, by pure magic, like it's a complete coincidence I guess, we are now in a situation where we need to break out our application into microservices and write it in Go. Why is that? Because if we look at how the business is doing, it's making tons and tons and tons of money. Our ratings on the, um, or like, uh, the user ratings are fairly high. They're not perfect, but they're high. So what, 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 why did we get to this point? All of a sudden, why is it impossible to continue without having microservices and uh, and you know, using Go or Rust or Node or whatever? It doesn't really matter, right? And this is something that happens all the time. Developers, if there is such a thing as lying as a developer, the most common lie I see is that they justify a technical decision, which is mostly something that is purely emotional. It's usually an emotional thing. Well, they justify it as if, as if this is going to make a big difference to our work process. This is going to bring us all this value. There's going to do, it's going to do all these awesome things. And they don't even research it. They don't look it up. They don't even come with anything. They don't, they don't come with anything beside the idea that this is what we want to do. And to me, that's very similar to those people who come into, I know that show, The Dragon's Den or whatever, like an entrepreneur who comes completely unprepared and sits in front of all these judges who know business and they start asking very simple questions such as, okay, what is your, well, what's your, What's your business case? What's your projected revenue? What's your, what are your current sales figures? And they don't have any of this. They have literally nothing apart from an idea saying that, oh, I think this is going to make a lot of money. And they haven't even spent time looking into if this does sound reasonable. They have done no prep work. And developers do this all the time. All the time. And it's it, it yeah, I especially in front end, I, I love it in front end because I've worked in I think it's two or three companies now where the same thing has happened every single time. And that is that the front end developers are really upset about the fact that they are using all the wrong libraries and they're not doing things in the way that we should be doing things. And I kind of just look at the stack and I go, well, this has pretty much been, okay, it's pretty much the thing that everybody's using, but we're not using, I don't know, immutable JS as an example. It doesn't have to be that, it can be many things. They usually complain about a range of things. And I go, it sounds to me like we don't really have a problem. It's just that you don't get to use that exact thing that you want to use, even though 
every single day there are companies absolutely everywhere who are making millions and millions and billions without that thing. Why is it that you're so obsessed with the fact that your workflow should be a reflection of the, the thing that you right now feel is the most important thing? Because that's the key thing. It's, that's why it's so dangerous to let developers... It's such a paradox. Because on the one hand, you want your developers to take ownership over your projects and your, and your development process, because if they take ownership, they will care, they will be invested. These are good things. It will lead to higher code quality, usually, and it will help with team spirit and all this good stuff, right? That's what you want, but you don't want them to do the thing that a lot of them do. And this is what's so dangerous about doing this. And that's, as I, as I said, they will tell you a lie and they will tell themselves a lie, stating that, oh, we can solve all of our problems if we just rewrite this whole thing in Perl or in C or whatever, like if we just do this thing here, which is just magically gonna solve all our problems, and incidentally, something that they're really passionate about, well, then it's gonna solve all the problems. And there are so many cases where this has happened and it's, it has ended in disaster for the people who are on the business side. Productivity has gone down because we're spending all this time doing something that we may never get a return on investment on because we don't actually know what we're going to get back. That's an, I love this as an example. We are just going to rewrite this thing in a new language that is going to serve up requests much faster. Well, have you actually researched if the calls that you're going to make are actually going to make a performance difference? Have you actually had a problem or are you rewriting the thing because you want to rewrite the thing? So what I want you to take away from this is that the most common lie I see developers tell each other and themselves is that this thing here, this solution, whatever language or framework or tool it is, is gonna make all the difference. It's gonna make everything better. And the reality is that most time it doesn't make a difference. It's just something that they do mentally. The only difference is to their own personal emotional satisfaction. And I'm very sorry to say that in many cases, it just takes a few months for that new tool, especially in front-end, to go from this was a really cool idea to now it's just a pain that we have to deal with that slows us down in other areas, but at the very least, it was a cool thing. And that's for some reason innovation. I don't know why it's innovation, but it is innovation. And I, at the same time, keep telling people, if that's innovation, and that's what we should be doing, then don't ever t ask me this question, why do we have so much legacy? Why, is, why does everything in front and always suck? Because of that, because of that exact thing, the thing that you just did, your innovation caused the situation because you didn't actually do the prep work. You told yourself a convenient lie that could justify the fact that you wanted to try something out. You tried it out, but you, did ha you didn't have any thought on whether or not this is gonna be a sustainable thing. You didn't have any cleanup strategy or anything like that. You didn't actually think the whole thing through. And then it's no wonder, at least in my opinion, why people from the business side stop trusting developers when we do these things so often. If we were to gain the trust of, the, if we are to gain the trust of the business people so that they actually see these investments as good investments, we have to be better than the unprepared entrepreneur who comes into the dragon's den. We have to do our homework. We have to prove that, well, if we do this and that, these things are actually concretely going to make a difference. And then it's not a lie anymore. If, because then we can hold it up and evaluate, is this actually worth it? Because it might not be the case that it is worth the investment. Even if we really love Go, maybe it's not a good idea to take an endpoint call that works in, I don't know, 800 milliseconds and rewrite and spend months on rewriting a system so that it does it in 780 milliseconds. It depends. Like it depends on the investment. Is it worth the investment? And that's something that you can't answer if you keep on telling yourself this lie that the inspiration you got from some blog article is enough proof that you for a whole rewrite or a restructuring of your work process. That's just not an uns It's an unsustainable way of working, and you, we should stop telling ourselves and other people this lie that everything's just going to be better if we do this thing. Have a great day.